News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Welcome to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. I'm Alan Gilbreth with DarkOakMedia.com. And I'm Maximilian. I'm not going to say where I'm joining you from tonight. <laughs> okay. And he's already thrown us for a curve. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And, uh, of course, we invite you to go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. Give us a like. And if you want, you can already see the uh, must-have item of the week which I already posted, Alan. It's uh, it's up there, and um, it's something actually I've used. It's funny. If I really want to analyze this, this might be one of the first tools I ever used okay. as a kid. I think you used them as a kid too, right? Oh, I still use them very frequently today. You sure. have actually one of my most f- of cherished tools. I think one of my first permanent scars came from this tool. <laughs> so uh, it's up there. If you can't wait, uh, go ahead and check it out on the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. Well, Alan, uh, we got sort of a mixed bag today. And I say that in the best of, best of terms because um, uh, it's it's all over the map. Okay. Um, okay. You're, th- I hope this isn't another one of your head fakes. The science of storage. Mm-hmm. I hope it's not just I went down to Target and bought a, a plastic uh, t- tub to store in or something. You know, It's going to involve that word. Okay. Max has another one of his uh, deep cuts, his idioms for idiots, um, which which has been a big hit. He was playing, he was doing mm-hmm. those all week uh, with Jake, right? You were filling in for J- uh, Bud this week. Yeah, on the Nation of Jake, people really seem to be enjoying the idioms for idiots. Okay. Don't forget where you started, Max. You're, you know... Yeah. You're part of this team over here, so. As you know. reluctantly as I admit it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are the little people you will forget. Yes, yeah. it's okay. Alan, uh, what do you think of this? The confession hotline is a juicy one. I guarantee somebody has done a variation of this. Uh, somebody has done a variation of this maneuver. This one is a little bit epic in terms of the uh, ramifications. It just goes to show Ooh. when you make a mistake, it. It could cost you thousands of dollars. So he, he's up to ramifications and maneuvers. And yeah. All in one confession. We got this lots is going to be good. Absolutely. We got lots of other stuff, and we don't want to neglect to also uh, forget. Don't forget this is Memorial Day weekend. Next time you uh, get a chance, go thank some of your veterans. Go buy. You know, a, a nice thing you can do, Alan. I've seen this uh, every now and again. You'll see some soldiers. I was over at the uh, Young Avenue Deli getting lunch and i saw some veterans over there unfortunately mm-hmm. it was a really large group i was tempted to bu- say tell the waitress to uh, let them to buy lunch on me but i didn't have enough to uh, they- <laughs> spring for everybody but do something nice for a veteran you know well you know especially in the uh, i'm gonna say the older neighbor department right you know there what? you go you know cut somebody's front yard for them every so often you take know a little, take a little labor off of somebody a little bit no kid you know what else if you know somebody that that you know that that was a veteran especially like you said some of these older guys they're a wealth you, you talk about stories and uh somebody oh. interesting to talk to and everything they, they'd probably love to be able to you know and sit down and talk it's with just you. stories over the years yeah, because you know, for for a lot of people out there, just actually, you just kind of triggered something. All right, very go ahead. shockingly to me today, uh, talking to a young man I've been working with all week. Of I actually turned around and looked at him, and I said he brought up a topic from the late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, and I looked at him, and I said, "So, what did you read about all this?" Mm-hmm. And he looked at it, and he told me all about the stuff, and I said, "All right, well." I'm going to throw you a curveball. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were there. Like literally when this there. This piece yeah. of history was happening. Mm-hmm. And if you look in this picture, you'll see my family member and you'll, you know. So it is a little bit like taking a, a, a taste of history from a point of view. Yeah. Which you don't necessarily get in a newspaper or book or whatever. You got somebody that was there personally. Absolutely. Boy, that's a pretty, pretty big intro we had today. Mm. So anyway, it's all coming at you today on Tool Talk Radio. But before we get to any of those things... And now, Tool Talk Radio's weekly salute. You'll like this, Alan. Some things are full of hot air. <laughs> if you want to cook a delicious pizza, the oven needs to be full of hot air. Mm, sort of logical. Mm. If you want to travel in a passenger balloon, you need to keep it filled with hot air. When Max, the producer, decided to explore a cave in Iceland, he was disconcerted to find that it was full of hot air and was even more so when the rumbling started and he realized that he was actually in the side entrance of an active volcano. Hey, I like that. I like that a little bit better that day. Yeah. Yeah. He he got quick on his feet there, Alan. 
And, of course, many of Alan Gilbert's Ooh. friends have accused him of being full of hot air. Oh, so Whenever he recounts the story of the semester he spent working as a visiting professor at the Idaho State Clown College. <laughs> 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 and, si <laughs> and since every student was quite literally vying for the role of class clown... Mm. Alan was forced to endure an endless stream of annoying practical jokes and wisecracks in the classroom, which eventually inspired Alan to give these young upstarts a lesson in street-level clowning. Oh, and yeah. so the next day, he brought the class out into the school co courtyard, which he had set up to look like a children's birthday party, for a practical exercise entitled Dealing with Surprise Situations Out in the Field, after which he barricaded them in and released a dozen rodeo bulls into the courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> that was in a good day. Interestingly, the class no longer pranked Alan after that lesson. <laughs> you know, Alan, it's, <laughs> you can't learn everything in a textbook. That's right. <laughs> On the job training. <laughs> yes, hot air can be found all around us. And naturally, this is true in our homes as well, and especially in our attic spaces. While high temperatures are ideal for cooking, they are not ideal for the interior spaces of our homes, and thus the invention of the remarkable item we celebrate today. My friends, we give you the attic vent. Yeah, Alan, I, I, I'm still marveling, though, at your, uh, at your teaching skills, you know. There, there, <laughs> it was a good day. <laughs> it's one of those lessons that sort of ingrained themselves in there. So, yeah, well, they, yeah, I usually get the question then goes, but then what did you do with the bulls? And uh -oh. I go, like, All right, it's Texas, guys. It's called a barbecue. Yeah, I was good about to say. <laughs> then you, you celebrate with a barbecue. All right, right. Alan. So, uh, so the the uh, the vent. Now we could go down a few paths with this. Mm. The uh, it, am I right in it? The, the first one I'm seeing is the soffit vent, and I guess folks, the uh, the soffit vent though sounds different than what I'm picking. Okay. I'm picturing that the vent, you know, you have a you have an A-frame house or something. Right. You have that, and you have the vents on the side. That's not considered a soffit vent, though, is it? Because the soffit vents are very small, as far as I, the ones I'm thinking of, the ones that kind of overhang and there's just a little. Well, they are now. So let's clarify, yeah, Alan. So you probably well, know the terminology better well, than me. But. You know, well, we're we're also gonna have to throw in your attic fan, your okay. soffit vents, and your ridge vents. Right. Because the whole idea here is air's got to move. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder when they discovered this. Because I just keep thinking of some of these old constructions where you might have had an attic that is just completely closed in and what that would have been like. And, what and the, you're going to you find know. that on the east coast towards the north. Okay. You are not going to find that from eh, the Carolinas down. Yeah, nobody down south wants a closed no, in. You, yeah. Oh, we learned. They quick. know about airflow. Well, so. yeah. All right, so let's let's jump back across the pond for a moment and let's go someplace like the French Riviera. Oh, okay. Beautiful, wonderful, sweeping homes, but they all have characteristics in common. Because every movie you ever see, every James Bond movie you get to watch, everything is open and the curtains are always blowing. Good. Okay. Now, uh, is that just because there's just that down well, that river? There's a, well, there's... you know, well, we're, we're talking about the ocean breeze comes in and goes out every yeah. day. So a lot of what you have built takes full advantage of that. I, I got to be honest. I'm not as familiar with the terrain other than I thought there's a lot of nice hills and not there mountains, is. but there's it's, so those create wind tunnels basically, right? All of these things okay. apply to let's get some air moving. Right, right, now, right. We're also going to have to kind of go to Oklahoma a little bit because when they opened up the land grab mm. just prior to the 19, you know, we're, we're about 1900, 1905. Yeah. Prior to that, you know, the U.S. was giving away land out west to kind of expand the country. Right. And people moved out to North Texas, Oklahoma. They got out on the Great Plains. And now you don't have ocean breezes and you don't have features that really move air well for you. Yeah. It's so, hot there, it, too. Man. And it's Holy hot. smokes. Yeah. And it, well, none of those are hot. It gets cold. Well, they're the ones that get those extra. They're in the middle of whatever that's everything, going on there. Everything going on. You get a forty degree change in an so, hour. It'll just now we're going to bring up the term shotgun house. Okay. What was a shotgun house? You should be able to shoot a shotgun in the front door, and yep. all the pellets should go out the back door. Right. All right. There's a specific. It wasn't just because it was easy to build, and it was a typical A frame, kind of like a barn. Mm -hmm. But when you 
angled the house correctly and you had the screen door on the front, the screen door on the back, you were catching all of the available air and moving it through. Yeah. So soffit vents also kept you from collecting moisture up well, underneath there. Well, I was going to say because the attic, we're talking about heat, but really we're also talking, you, you can't trap water. moisture. That's, heat and humidity. That's mold. That's just you that's know, your house terrible. falling apart. Right. right. Yeah. And it's got to be rough on the rafters and everything else. And it's just bad air. You don't want that kind of air in your home that's going to find its way into what you're breathing. Well, you know? And so. as we have been schooled a lot on recently mm -hmm. is overheating the attic also cooks your roof. Well, there you go. You know, because uh, we, we talk about our good buddy Jay Hill yeah. with uh, the, those attic vents, or I guess they're called roof vents. Well, he's and, doing ridgeline vents now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll see the old twirly birds up on the up on the top of the house. Right. And they were supposed to help get a lot of the heat out of the attic. So, you know, it's kind of funny. You and I are big proponents of telling people your house is going to move. Yeah. Well, you just brought up the topic that says your house also has to breathe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, you know, you think about it's easy to go, you know, we, we've all maybe been up on a roof when it's hot and you touch the shingle. and it, mm. Well, you, it's easy to think about the heat there, but there's heat. You know, you go in another eight inches or ten inches and suddenly you're in the attic space and that, man, that it's hot air and it's, it's just. It's trapped. And, it's and still... somebody had the nifty idea to let it breathe. I'm surprised, though. I have to believe. Attic vents were around longer than this 1830 invention that I'm seeing. I just, well, I, I, I'd like to believe that because I'm thinking, and, and maybe in some of these like, um, I don't know, cathedrals and things like that. I Wasn't there some sort of ventilation up by like the bell towers? Oh, and, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. They had all yeah. kinds of things. What you're looking at here is, again, uh, remember the patent office came in around this time. There we go. So a lot of people began patenting the version of something they were making. Okay, you'd say that just last week with the framing square. Exactly. Guy, I'm like, okay, this guy did not invent the framing square. He didn't, but you'll notice. He invented where, his framing square. His version of right. the framing square was exactly what he built. So if you wanted a Bob framing square, mm -hmm. you went to Bob, but Bob went down to the patent office and said, hey, I make this. Can it be mine for the next 17 years right. or however long your patent lasted at that time? Yeah. So what you're looking at here is... The production of yeah. a standard use. In this case, it's a soffit vent. Right. And there probably at the time were 50 different kinds. Uh, today, there's probably 100 different kinds. But now you've got a way of registering your particular design because your design may work best in Idaho. So sure. we brought up Idaho. There we go. Uh, yeah. But it may not work so great in New Orleans. Well, I was about to say, I okay, this is an interesting thing because based on, okay, when I lived in Chicago, Alan, uh, especially when you start getting towards downtown, they call it the Windy City. There yes. are some parts of the town where there was just a continual breeze, especially live, like in the northern mm -hmm. suburbs by the lake. Well, they their air, their air, they almost have a natural, you know, airflow that's moving yes. through the attic and everything. Well, you might live in a place that doesn't have that, and, and you might live in... Arizona, or you might live in Florida. So you have humidity considerations, you have natural airflow, you have heat. So I would think there's not a one size fits all when it comes to attic vents, right? right. I mean, well, or it, attic solution, attic systems, we should call it, you know. Well, well, you know, having lived in disparate places like West Texas and North Carolina with Memphis in the middle, uh, you look at like Memphis, Vicksburg, uh, Baton Rouge, Louis, uh, you get down to New Orleans. We're, we are cities on top of a huge river that are traditionally known for humidity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we got to, you know, it, and trust me, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening outside the Memphis area, you just haven't lived until you have a 95 degree Fahrenheit day and you're pushing 80% humidity. Yeah. It, it is like walking around in a sauna. You take uh, a shower, you get uh, a nice clean shirt on, and then all and of a sudden... And 10 minutes later, right. you're just as soaked as you were in the shower. Yeah. Uh, now, happily, we don't have an, an overabundance of that weather, but we have it. We get it in about August or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, honestly, today it feels nice. But, you know, yeah. Today feels gorgeous. Yeah. But all right, today is a great example, but today is moist. Yeah. We have a high moisture content. We've had a lot of rain. Um, and when I t get into my soffits and my attic... On my particular house, uh, because I have two stories, I have a soffit screen. 
Yeah. Because... Oh, yeah, because the critters like to I, get it. Oh. And you better get that rigid... We have some of that heavy-duty screen, Alan, because, you right. know, we've we've had a ongoing battle with squirrels. So, I, years ago, it's not as beautiful to look at, but... I got to keep them out. It's better yeah, than having and, well, squirrels in your attic. So. And again, you're trying. You welcome to the conflict. We want to keep the outside outside. We want to keep the inside inside, but it's still got to breathe. Right. So welcome to how you designed the house, how you design. And one thing that is actually making a comeback related to this, the front porch. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, in new construction, I see a lot of big front porches. People are back to having a front porch. It's pretty cool, man. Because inside of the house was miserable. Guess where the good breeze is? Yeah. The good breeze is out on the front porch. And we've already, now going back to the 70s, we kind of got crazy. We kind of lost the back porch, and we went for one of your favorite topics. We went for the decks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And... You know, having a, a really nice deck with a good screen, you know, sunscreen over it, of uh, can be five, six degrees cooler than the air around it. Oh, I've seen that. And, and the minute you put a, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm working Gotta with somebody right now. They have right? a they have a concrete deck in the back and a swimming pool, and they don't like the situation because you, you you walk on the concrete, it burns Ooh, your feet. It's yeah, you know, and I've done those, and like you said, I almost feel like it's it's close to twenty degrees cooler than it one than it was, you know, before the day. You put baked. a fan out there, right. and you put you know, you make some air move. Shoot, it it'll cool it uh, off, man. And yeah. you just hit it. It's all about keeping that air moving. Yeah. So uh, we've talked about the attic fan in the past, and the attic fan when you kicked it on began expelling all of that hot air out of your house and forced your house to let air in through the soffit vents, the front door, the windows, because it wasn't blowing air into your house. The attic van was blowing air out of the house. Now, not to beat this into the ground, Alan, but we are talking about airflow, and it's, you know, so we'll, let's just finish the conversation. The attic vent, I mean, not the attic, the power vent, we're talking about it's got a little motor. Right. And uh, they come in different sizes. Right. And um, I, th I think the biggest mistake I see with some of those is uh, either they put them in the, in, okay, once in a while they can leak, but usually it's just because somebody didn't put the flashing and they didn't install it correctly. But also, it's not just about the amount of air that it's trying to push out. It's uh, I've seen times where um, the other vents are blocked. Well, if that attic vent, it, you could have a strong motor, it's blowing out, mm. but if it's not, if if there's not enough airflow coming in, in other words, like you got right. it's a it's a two part system, it's just like an air conditioning unit. You have to have you can't just put something in and block your return, or you're not going to get any airflow. Right, you know, Ex so it's exactly. got exactly. It's it's a two part system. So so for people, especially if you're buying an older home, yeah, of make sure your home inspector checks out the soffit vents to make sure they're not blocked. Right, and to check out the attic vent. To make sure somebody didn't get cute 20 years ago when they got a squirrel in the attic and, you know, plywood that over. I've seen that. I've seen and that a seen lot that a of lot. times. Yeah. Or plexiglass. Go figure. Uh, yeah. They're like, okay, well, why did you do that? You know, Because like, the squirrel they want, couldn't chew through they it. They still want to let the heat of the sun in there, but yeah. not the, right, so. All right, well, Alan, uh, I think that's very good, though. The attic vent definitely deserves a salute. Yes, I mean, it does. That is a major part of your home, and if you don't have one, you're going to notice it. So, yeah. But, Alan, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a good transition to talk about our good buddy, Larry Brown, with Brown Refrigeration. Oh, because, yes, I mean, it talk, is. His air, you know. Larry Brown is his name. Airflow is his game, right? It is. I mean, in every in every manner, it's uh, heating and air conditioning. It's the clean air system. It's uh, well, and the smart home system. But mm -hmm. really, it revolves around conditioning your air in every manner. So, I mean, and, and air conditioning is about controlling humidity and oh, temperature. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize how much water an air conditioner makes in a day. Yeah, when he told us how many gallons, literally. And it's, it's not a, it, quarts. It's not cups. It is, it, on an average size home, could be as much as 40 gallons of water I mean, the moisture farmers on Tatooine probably don't even pull yeah. in that much water. So, <laughs> But anyway, uh, you can't beat uh, Brown Refrigeration. They're, they're highly qualified technicians. Uh they just have a very tight culture over there, they and, it's, and they they run a great operation. And remember, your HVAC system needs maintenance. It's like your vehicle. So even if it's even if it's uh, 
you know, it's if it's been a couple of years since maybe anybody's checked it out, get some get brown refrigeration mm-hmm. over there. Let them do, give them one of your uh, give them one of their tune up specials. Yes, they're always running specials, but they're just great people, and you want to have a relationship with your HVAC company, and you want a company you can trust. So call Brown Refrigeration. You can get in touch with them directly at 901-362-1881. Or go to brownref.com. I'm hoping we're going to see him over at the Italian Festival. Next week, folks, we're on the road again. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to drop by. And usually he's good about bringing some swag, too, right? So we no, should have some some, uh, some goodies there. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later in the show. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio here on News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Oh, I'm afraid the deflector shield will be quite operational when your friends arrive. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. You know, Alan, when I got here this morning, Max had the deflector shield over the, <laughs> over the studio, but I still got in. I got spoiled. I'm uh, producing for Jake. Now I know how terrible I got it over here. Absolutely. <laughs> and welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the deflector shield. Am I your N- pal? Yeah, <laughs> you can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And we invite you to go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. Give us a like. Check out all the action over there. And, um, Alan, I'm guessing we'll probably be posting pictures when we start doing some of these appearances. We should mention mm-hmm. this because one of the things is we um, we really enjoy these remote broadcasts. And it's it's great. Ever since we got over here with Cumulus, they, just the gear that they've got and the signal that they've got, it's just it's just nice to be able to, you know, I remember those old days of radio remotes. You, you oh. pull up with a big van. I, f- I almost feel like there was like, a, you know, the generator, the whole, oh my and, gosh. And just like praying oh. that everything's going to work or some jerk's not going to unplug a cable that's running, you know, 200 <laughs> yards to, to <laughs> wherever else. And now you, you set up, it's a portable thing. And so Alan, uh, so uh, our tour dates, you could call them. So mm. June 11th, I mean, I'm sorry, June 4th, we're going to be at the Italian festival next week. That is a riot. That's, yes. I've been going to that for 25 Ever? years. Yeah. Um, um, it's over at Marquette Park at Park and um, Mendenhall, and uh, I'm just warning you, folks. You probably have to park a couple blocks away. It's in a residential area. There's real. They also, if you park at the Hilton, um, the Hilton office complex, which is down Park uh, towards Perkins, they have a shuttle bus, which is kind of handy. Oh, and they nice. they have like three or four that are running, and that's 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 a good option. But um, it's a family friendly event, and uh, Cumulus is going to be well represented there, Alan. Um, uh, we got a whole tent. We're going to be taking turns. So uh, yeah. I know you and I will be doing this show live. Oh, yeah. So can Geek wait. Tank. And yeah. Geek Tank. And uh, some guy named the Food Dude is going to be loose at that thing all weekend. Yeah, I wonder who that could be. Mm, so, can't imagine. Yeah. What, what kind of food would you cook for the Italian Fest, uh, Alan? I, I, I can't I'm, figure that I, out. I'm not thinking about cooking. I'm thinking about sampling. Okay, sampling. So. Oh, yeah. And, of course, our buddy Cindy Williams with Shelf Genie in the mm-hmm. Mid-South will be set up there. That that Now, you'll see what we mean. Although, I have to say, Alan, this, okay, when you set up as a, a vendor or exhibitor, at the um, at the Italian Fest, it's a little bit like um, it's a little bit like um, I, I want to say like a military. Th- you know, you have to you have to deal with adversity. It might get yep. real windy. <laughs> the rain might come. So it's not the same setup she does when she's in the nice cozy you know right, thing of right. the Agri Center indoors or something. But she'll still have the party tent set up, she'll and it's still going to be yeah. rocking over there. So so make sure you go say hi to her, and you'll see what we mean when we talk about you know. The shelf genie culture. Oh, yes. And then, Alan, this is what I really want. So next, the weekend after that, June 11th, uh, you and I and Brandon and uh, we'll be broadcasting from Anime Blues Con. Indeed. Which, folks, if you don't know what that is, it's it's a big geek convention celebrating right. anime. Not just anime, though. You get your superhero well, yeah. and science fiction it's, geeks it's, over there. Um, it's all of fantasy and fandom. So if you're a Mandalorian fan or you're a, a Disney Plus aficionado or sure. you like hanging around with uh, Picard and Q and the gang, uh, yeah, come on out. You'll find a home. Although one of our friends, she wore uh, she wore a Lord of the Rings dwarf costume. And this was, you know, in the middle of July. At one, and warm. she overheated. Little you might want to think about the yep. costume you yep. wear. 
Don't yeah, be comfortable. Be comfortable. Yeah, exactly. But Anime Blues Con is a riot, and it's going to be down at the uh, the brand new um, remodeled convention center, the Renaissance Center. Mm-hmm. I guess it is the official name for it now, and we'll be we'll be set up there, and uh, we we hope you'll drop by and see us. And uh, in in the meantime, too, you can always call us any day of the week. Uh, with comments or, you know, especially with our um, confession hotline. Yes. Call us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline. Uh, call or text at 901-683-0989. And the beauty with that, Alan, is you also can send pictures. Because mm. if you have a bad confession or a comment, you know, we can take these any day of the week and then read them on the air. Just send us your project and ask us a question. Yeah, or call us or text ask, us. happy to weigh in. Call us or text us now. We're happy to do that. But at the top of the next hour, Ellen, I do have a pretty juicy confession that we're going right. to get to that I, you're going to like. Can't wait. All right. But before we get to that, uh, let's talk science. Hail science! Well, Joe, you triggered me a little bit today talking Good. about airflow. Yeah. Because uh, we, we get our best uh, work out of you when you're triggered, Alan. Uh, you know, so, sometimes. Okay. Uh, because the big thing about airflow is moisture. And you and I keep telling everybody water is the enemy. Yeah. And another topic we keep bringing up, of course, Shelf Genie and stuff like that. So I thought, you know, let's talk a little bit about storage. Okay. Now, folks, full disclosure, just to bring you a little bit behind the curtain, because uh, th- this is an ongoing, Alan, this is, I've known, uh, I've been broadcasting on the air with you for seven years. Yep. And I know that you like to watch that little vein on the side of my head where if you, if you, t- what's that rule in theater? If you show them a gun in the first act, you better shoot somebody by the third or That's something. That's right. Okay, so when we say we are going to talk science, yes. and we're going to do, and then you come in here and you start talking about something, I'm like, that doesn't sound very scientific to me. I call foul. Mm, okay. And you, and, or you take, you know, or you just meander, or you get you get me right where the <laughs> the vein is pulsating enough where I'm like, and then you finally, you know, do it because you enjoy. Uh, you know, upsetting me. That's Torturing kind of, you. Yes. Right. Seven okay, years. so that's not one of these stories, right? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. All right, well, let's go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay. All, All right. right. The so science of storage. When you first bought your house, Joe, how did you store stuff? Uh, Well, <laughs> my house doesn't count, but okay. Uh, no, you know, seriously, back, in back those, when you um, were, you know, pre-children in box, days. A lot of boxes, cardboard boxes, and I hate to admit it, up in the attic. Okay. Probably a double whammy. You so. get That's why Christmas <laughs> ornaments turn brown and... <laughs> You know exactly right. Okay, so storage has always been a problem. Yeah, and depending upon what part of the country or what part of the world you listen to, because by the way, Joe, I'm going to throw you a new one. Oh, okay. I'd like to say uh, welcome to all of our new listeners in New Zealand. Oh, now New Zealand's a pretty place. Yeah. It, you talk about Lord of the Rings country, uh, yeah, guys. I mean, if yeah. if you want us to do a live show, New Zealand, really call. You wouldn't Give have us to a twist call. our arm. You're really oh, that's not going to be a big twist there. Okay, so. Do they stay throwing other shrimp on the Barbie down there? I, yeah, I don't care what they say. My but. only complaint about you guys recording from New Zealand is what time does that mean I have to come in to record you all? Yeah. <laughs> you guys get to join in with me. I'm a New Zealand time, wonderful 8 a.m., and I'm here like at, at midnight or whatever. Hey, Yes, and, exactly. And Max, you know what else is interesting about New Zealand is the toilets flush backwards. Yes, yeah, that's the water the step other is, way. is the other way. That's a Simpsons episode premise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, Alan. We we are interrupting you. And, and, and he wonders we're the ones sidetracking you. Yeah, and, and, and he wonders what happens to science episodes. Right. All right. So we're we're talking about storage, and occasionally I love to bring up the words we live in blessed times. Amen, brother. Because. Storage of our in our lifetime, Joe, really kind of started out as a lot of cardboard boxes, and what happens. Yeah, they, they fall the cardboard apart, dries the out. Cardboard dries out or it gets wet. And it absorbs every bit of moisture or heat. You know, or I feel about, like the heat, you know. Or how about one of your little furry friends? Oh, sure. That's not going to keep a squirrel or no, a mouse it, out or anything. It suddenly it's become, you know, it's it's now a nest. I would dare say a cardboard box might be the ideal uh, home for, like, critters because it's <laughs> it's soft. They can chew it. They can <laughs> tear it apart and manipulate it and make a, make a nest however they want. So, yeah. Cardboard is not your friend in the attic. No, not really. Uh, So, all right. Or the basement. Same, you know. Well, and you're kind of with me now because I was walking through one of the big box stores this week, and they were putting up a new display. And, of course, one of their big big sign was, get rid of your clutter. Yeah. And and as I looked at the display, it dawned on me that 30 years ago, that display wasn't possible. Mm, okay, now I'm intrigued. Because now, look at all the different materials available 
and all of the techniques available to store something. Uh. And so we'll pick with, um, I thought I was kind of like, all right, let's, let's think of something the average homeowner has one of somewhere around the house. And it's usually a dress, a suit, or a quilt. That's it's, true because some, there's some things you don't, okay, you don't need a quilt in the summer. You don't need a fancy dress, you know, year round. You might wear it to an occasion once every two or three years. Especially if it's winter. It's right. wool, it's heavy, or it's inherited. And if you're like me, you wear a suit like once every four or five years. Yeah, you, you, every you time know. you go to a funeral. Right. Maybe. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe. Um, but I was also thinking like, you know, we're here in the Mid-South. There are some very elaborate and amazing quilts handed down from mom to grand, from grandmom to mom to yeah. daughter to, you know. That's true. And how long is this material going to last in the hot, in the cold, in the heat, in the humidity? And it's not. Right. It's going to become threadbare and break down. So had to ask the question. So I, I swung by a, a fabric store and they actually have a quilt storage kit that you put the quilt in this really nice plastic you know, good plastic cover. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a good uh, non-reactive plastic. And then they have a little pump where you suck all the air out of it. Yeah. And it shrinky dinks down to about half of its size. And now you have a quilt completely protected against everything but physical damage. Sure. Yeah. So I was going, all right, this is pretty amazing. What else can we do? Yeah. And, of course, in the kitchen storage department... We have of uh, air removal storage systems for putting things in the freezer. Yeah. Of how about the miracle of a Ziploc bag? How old are those? Yeah, because Ziplocs uh, and, Any, and they're usually pretty. Uh, they're 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 usually uh, they come in different thicknesses and stuff. Right. Now, there's a, too. There's a thousand every size, different kinds every, now. Right. Every type of plastic. But, and know, honestly, I've, there's some Ziploc bags that are made specifically for a wedding dress or something. Like they're that big. Yeah. You know? there, so, there's yeah. really designed for that, and it has the ability to close it and seal it. And I remember the commercial from 20 or 30 years ago where they had like the bag of chili. Yeah. And they would turn it upside down and hold it over somebody on the commercial and go. Our bags really work. And, yeah. you know, so here we go. Of There's a lot of options now for storage. So if you're going to store records, yeah. of there are plastics designed and boxes designed specifically to store your records, mm -hmm. maybe even in the hanging folders with a good locking tight lid. Right. So that silverfish, cockroaches, mice, and that kind of thing are not going to get into it. Yeah. Uh, for temporary, for our type of storage, Joe, uh, there's just all kinds of non-chemical reactive. You know, the Alan, I hate to say this because you are. Okay, Alan, uh, I'm going to say this. I think this qualifies. I don't know if this qualifies as science or not. To the degree that it's about the plastics that have been developed right. or the storage. I mean, I'm just thinking of these tubs that I don't remember them as a kid. I don't remember those big mm -mm. stackable plastic tubs with different types of materials right. designed to, to, to withstand different elements. I guess this is, I don't know, it's sort of sciencey, but it does make me think Well, this is a market that, okay, this is a product that probably didn't get a lot of thought a hundred years ago. And suddenly they're like, wait a minute, why should we store things and have them ruined by weather, by by mice, by humidity? This is a product we can create. These are the materials we can create it out mm -hmm. of. And so I, I could see how this evolved into, uh, you know, I mean, it's a science-y thing. It's yeah. an entire An segment. industry, really. Well, but see, now I'm going to get it really science-y because I'm going to tie it into recycling. Okay. Oh. Because one of the, one of my favorite products out there, and I'll even give the company a shout out, is the really useful box company. Which with the best title ever. The best title ever. <laughs> it is a big, ugly, heavy duty, black plastic tin, mm -hmm. and it is made out of completely recycled plastics. Yeah, it's thick. It's heavy. I've had these for years. Right, and they. They're just amazing. They're, I'm not going to say they're indestructible, but I'm going to say they're throw stuff in it, throw it in the back of the truck, and drag it around. Durable. And you reminded me of these carbon fibers you're always talking about. And in, in, in carbon fiber technology, 
Like I, I, I saw a bike. It's made right. of car, a carbon fiber frame. You can lift the yes. thing with your pinky. It's so yes. light. It, it's, it's just as strong. It might even be stronger than a than a metal frame. It's, it's basically down to the, I don't, almost the microscopic level of how these uh, fibers interlocked with each other. Yes. And they, okay, well, it's the same with storage. That's why you can have a tub that you can stack a, a 500 pounds something on top of it because it's wow. it's it's configured in a way that is stackable it's durable but you also if it's recyclable that's sort of like the trifecta that's, that's well, and again you know as again as i was looking at this display and it was just dawning on me that really no matter what your storage need was yeah you could stand here for a minute and kind of go there's the size i need there's the durability i need because this is going to be lightweight storage. Right. I'm going to put my cloth scraps and yarns and stuff like that in it. So I don't need a big, giant, heavy, chunky box. Right. And then I was thinking, like, for you and I, we're, we're, cleaning, up, we're cleaning up a scrap pile at a work site. we got to haul the debris off. Well, one of these great, big, old, chunky tubs, I mean, 78-quart yeah. tubs sitting in the back. You click the lid back on it. We don't have to worry about stuff blowing out of the back of the truck. We don't have to worry about uh, whether or not we're going to split the storage or we're just going to junk up the back of our truck. So it was pretty amazing to me. When I looked at this, I said, all right, the science of storage has moved to a point to where it's almost invisible in our lives. Yeah. We don't even really second think this. Well, and, and you think you start thinking of these tiny homes and these people that have to get every square inch out of their, you know, space so that they can store things in a, in a effective way and everything. So, yeah, that's that's true. You're making me think of some other stuff, Alan. OK, I, I, Max, if we're going to take a vote, did did this qualify as a science segment, you think? Or I mean, I just wanted to use this sound effects. <laughs> well, that's my when I call foul from now on, Max. I want oh, you to well, hit you the uh, foghorn, but okay. But yeah. the, the, the trick here was that there is a product now, pretty much specifically designed for whatever it is your specific need is. Okay, and it's happened quietly. Well, I, I mean, said you, you you don't see a lot of commercials for you know, hey, I got a box. No. Yeah, but well, when you go into the store, exciting, but yeah. there's there's this huge display for it. Sorry, yeah. you just made me think of another Simpsons episode where the field trip was at the box factory. <laughs> there you go. And they got to walk around and look at a are box. We, are uh, you yeah. going to get to see a finished box? No, they do that in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Alan, you just made me think of something, and we might call, call an audible in the next hour. I, I've got you just... Gave me an idea for something that uh, that we might, might want to unpack. Oh, okay, like well, there you go. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Uh, but but I, I pretty interesting, I guess, Alan. You know, it, we didn't have to hit the foghorn sound effect, even though Max I did got anyway. To. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alan. You know who is a let, let's transition. You know who is a storage expert. You, you already mm. know where I'm going with mm -hmm. this. I mean, you gave me the perfect lead in. First, you give me the air the air discussion, and yes. then we lead in with Larry Brown. Well. Um, Cindy Williams, as we mentioned, mm -hmm. she'll be on tour. Her next uh, appearance is this coming Saturday over at the uh, Italian Fest. Shelf Genie of the Mid South, boy, you talk about you talk about a company that takes that they think about every square yes. inch. They take um, they they create solutions. They it's not just about maximizing every square inch of your kitchen or your your kitchen cabinets, your bathroom cabinets, your hallway closet, any any space really. Where you can put shelves, glide out systems. Mm -hmm. They, you know, especially we we keep pushing her to start expanding into the uh, children's playroom or the media room. Man, I am all about that room. toy room. Yeah. yeah, or these or these media rooms. Yeah. What if you got five hundred DVDs floating around or these video Easy. game consoles? Easy. So, um, what's great about that though is it's it's a two it's it's not just about storage. It's also about the easy access because it it's all well and good to you know have things in your cabinets, but if you can't reach them easily, well, it sort of right. defeats the purpose. Well, there's nothing out of reach anymore because these are full extension glide out systems. So every single thing in your kitchen, uh, when you have the shelf genie system is accessible, which that's a huge thing, especially if you have a robotic hip, Alan, mm -hmm. you know, right. or you know, bad does happen. or something. So the, and also everyone in shelf, uh, everyone in the shelf genie team is qualified. It's amazing how much training they go through for this. It's Good. because they want the designers, they want the installers, everybody involved with this process to uh, to get you the best results possible, to make it a completely custom experience. And they also, uh, this consultation is free. 
I mean, you get a lot of information just in the consultation phase, and uh, it, it, that alone is worth the, is is worth it. So get in touch with the good people at Shelf Genie of the Mid South. You can call them directly at 901-422-8225. When you do, make sure you tell them you heard about it on a Tool Talk Radio, or go to shelfgenie.com forward slash Mid South Memphis. All right, Alan, uh, we've got um, Max wants to weigh in here. And now, a deep cut with Maximilian. <laughs> he just wants to push that button. Okay. He likes those fruit ninja. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got for us, Max? So, as I, we talked about before, I was on Nation of Jake, and the Idioms for Idiots was a popular segment. And so, I wanted to conclude this weekend by giving you all some idioms for idiots. Okay. Mm. Now, now, once again, we're not talking about the idiots being our listeners. I feel like the title is misleading. So I don't care. It just flows well. <laughs> now, I, I, I noticed he was staring directly at you. So it's all right. Yeah. Well, we know you're a la- you're passionate about language and and where language comes from. And, mm. uh, and, and I think everybody is. So you do the research for us. And so I wanted to share with you all, this isn't really home improvement, but I just feel like it's a story that Joe would appreciate. That's all. Mm-hmm. The only reason I chose it is kind of because of that. And so today I wanted to talk about get one's goat. <laughs> <laughs> and this means to irritate somebody. Yeah. And then so what's interesting is a lot of idioms come from not only nautical stuff, but also a lot of gambling and horse racing. And so during horse racing. Really? Race, I didn't know that. And so to get one's goat comes from horse racing times. And so during horse races, some horses would get very anxious, and so owners would place goats in the stalls with them to calm them down. Mm-hmm. And then so rival horse owners, being the jerks that they are, would sometimes steal these goats, therefore upsetting the horse and making it most like more likely to lose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Alan, this is very interesting because goats, you, you know, the big thing now, my wife does yoga. There's this goat yoga. Have you seen this? Yes. They have yes. a yoga room and then they release, you Baby know, we've goats, seen how you release kids. the rodeo bulls into yes, your class. Yeah, well, they yeah. release a bunch of little goat. To me, it seems like it'd be very distracting, but everybody seems to love it. They, uh, and they'll, they, they, you might be doing the uh, downward dog pose and this goat jumps on your back or whatever. Well, and, it, it, all right, it's not full size goats. No, here. these are One, these young are these goat. are little kids. Right. And you discover that A, they're adorable. B, they want to love on you and walk on you. And so the weirder the yoga pose you get into, the stranger the mountain climbing experience is for the little goat. So horses so, feel that too though. Horses like now, well, Max, are you talking about full size goats? Because yeah. a little goat would get stepped on, but yeah. Right. A grown goat in this particular case was kind of like a pacifier. For a whore. Because I just feel like goats are kind of irritating. All right. Have you Maybe seen... the sound they make is what's Well, annoying. have you seen the movie Ferdinand the Bull? No. Uh-uh. Well, the Ferdinand the Bull features a peace goat. They okay. put a, a goat in with the bull to give the bull some company. So okay. now they just need to have the um now they just need to have the horse lie on a couch and then like the goat kind of be like a psychiatrist and be like, So what's ailing you today, Mr. Horse? Mm-hmm. Well, it's true. It's unusual. I would not. I mean, goats have a po, uh, a spiky horn that could bump into the horse. I'm amazed that that's their. I, I would have thought like I don't know, like a like a dog. Why not put a Labrador Retriever in there with a horse? To well, me, that would be the true companion. Well, so. they put dogs in with cheetahs. <laughs> <laughs> You're sure about this, Max? Yes. This is uh, this is where it came from. Yeah, why not? I would have never predict when you said get my goat, I would have never predicted that was the origin of that. Oh, that's so. okay. What do you figure out about scapegoats? Okay, but I'm bump. Okay, well, Alan, uh, very good, Max. We we love these idioms for idiots. And thank you, Mr. Goats. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hour one of Tool Talk Radio is in the can, you guys. Uh, I don't know where it went, but uh, never fear, po- uh, folks. We've got hour two of Tool Talk Radio coming up next. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. And welcome to Hour 2 of Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. I said it a little slower there, Alan, if you notice. Mm -hmm. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And I should re- I should remind people, you can call or text us any day of the week there, which is usually kind of how it works. 
Um, we prefer you to call or text during the show, but if you have a comment, especially uh, with one of our confessions, you know, we're going to open up the, uh, we're going to read from the confession hotline here in a minute. But the nice thing about this, Alan, with our technology today is uh, when you text, you can ac actually send pictures that way too. I was surprised to know that. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know if you can send video, but if you've if you've done something really stupid or if you've got photo evidence of it, it, it makes it just that much more um, more interesting when you when you share it that way. So, um, and also if you want to go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, you should uh, give us a like. Definitely go there anyway. But you can also see the must have item of the week, which we're going to get to uh, shortly. And uh, we also want to remind everybody, you know, let's uh, th thank our veterans this weekend, this Memorial Indeed. Day weekend, and uh, maybe drop by here in the Mid South. We've got a beautiful, um, we've got a beautiful cemetery that is. It's it's nice to visit there over on Forest Hill, Irene. Um, in uh, I guess it's in Germantown. It's not quite in Collierville, but it's a nice place to uh, to go and um, you know and and kind of meditate on what on the sacrifice they made for us, and of course. Over in uh, Overton Park, they have a really great Veterans Memorial. Yes, I love do. that. So uh, take take time to thank thank veterans this weekend. So, all right, Alan, um, let's do it. I've called you all here because I need some honest answers. Yeah, they all kind of broke. So, when do I start? <laughs> there is a basket of oil-soaked rags above a wood-burning stove. Are you out of your mind? You put a jet engine on a lawnmower? <laughs> this time, they are going to be held accountable this time they are the ones who will pay you know it's funny when max added that little tagger on the end of mm. this time they, they're gonna pay it's amazing how many times people do pay this person paid oh okay thousands of dollars oh, not, to, uh, not to not to tease this too much but anyway it's time for our uh, confession hotline um, as we say, it's therapeutic. If you if you've done something <laughs> stupid with a tool, or if you've uh, done something to your home that you thoroughly regret, hey, not only does it, it, it does it help you psychologically to confess it, you know, on the radio in front of thousands of listeners, mm. it gives us good material. But also, you might help some homeowner not do this. In yeah, the if future. you've done it, somebody else is thinking about doing it. Yeah, some young hotshot homeowner is going, hey, I, I've got an idea, and th and this is going to, you know, so we're, we're doing our public service, Alan, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're ridiculing people for our amusement, uh, which, yeah, and, and so, so it's a win-win. All right, Alan, dear Tool Talk Radio, I already know where this is going. I painted my garage floor with regular old latex <laughs> oh. house paint. And it was a disaster. <laughs> oh, the classic rookie mistake. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I don't... For, okay, so he's got a little bullet point thing here. One, I don't think I cleaned the floor well enough. Two, mm. there was an oil stain and it stayed gummy and then it just peeled off. Oh, I know yeah. what he's talking oh, about. Yeah. Three, the whole floor was tacky for about a month. <laughs> Four, it did not stay clean. In all in capital letters, it did not stay clean and peeled up randomly everywhere. Five, eventually my wife had a professional company come and strip the floor to do it right. Chris and Olive Branch. Alan, Alan, Alan. Oh. I mean, we how many times? And Okay, look, full disclosure, I've painted brick. Now, I, I did remember that I, I always had a certain respect for con a, a concrete floor in a garage because there's a lot of dynamics. It's a right. It's holding moisture. It's got stains. It's It's... It's not, you got to drive on it. It's good. So I never would jump Captain Kirk style into painting that. I can't promise in my old days, though, Alan, there might have been some brick or some uh, concrete, ver you know, uh, going vertically that I kind of just said, I just got to get some paint on here. Then, mm. it, it, then it peels off and does the same thing. But Alan, there's about, <clears throat> there's about five mistakes here. So let's, let's, let's unpack this. Oh, so. I just. Where where to start? You know, well, we'll we'll start at the cleanliness of the concrete. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, this is one of the few times where I'm gonna go. Did you have a pressure washer? Uh, okay. Oh, are we gonna debate on times. this, Max? One get of the, the few uh, debate times. ready. Yeah. yeah, one of the few okay. times a pressure washer was probably actually a usable tool. Mm, okay, go ahead. I'll, well, I'll hear you, you come out. On, I wouldn't. Does. I wouldn't have reached it, for the pressure washer. <clears throat> well, the okay. pressure the pressure washer does get a lot of the subsurface grime off. It's going to be difficult to get off any other way. Okay. Uh, two of uh, grease was not removed. 
Right. There, there was no, I, I heard nothing about some Dawn with dishes or any type of grease removing. Probably so a solvent would have worked, you know, some yeah, kind of grease removing something solvent. Something like that. So, yeah. I mean, right there pretty much doomed any project from the beginning. Right. Well, here's what I'll say about this, Alan, because I, I, okay, first of all, let, let's not get into the whole pressure washer debate. I, I, I have almost no use for pressure washers at all. Is this a debate, Joe? I don't know. A point, counterpoint, maybe, <laughs> man. There you go. All right. <laughs> I'm just eager to push these buttons. I know. I, he loves those hot I, I Okay, I don't want to turn this it's into concrete. A, it's a, concrete, not glass. It's not wood. It's actually a substance designed to have a pressure washer used on it. Okay, let's focus on what we can agree on. Right. The cleaning was not done. Okay, because no, my thing was with not a, done. a pressure washer, I've seen a lot of garages where the walls are sheetrock. I don't want a pressure washer blasting water all over the sheetrock. Or, you know, plus my, my beef with these pressure washers is... It's not okay. You're talking about uh, two things here, Alan. You need to more or less. Uh, we've seen these concrete floors, and I bet you this is the, the case here, where it's got almost a sheen to it because it's 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 as though it's almost a polished surface. It's not right. polished, but it's so smooth. Well, the the what you need to do there in that situation is clean it and more or less etch it, which basically you know the solvents we're talking right. about where you um we've seen this a lot for um cabinets and stuff a deglosser you want something that that does that same type of thing it etches the surface so that now instead of painting over for lack of a better term like a glassy surface you're painting over more or less a porous spongy surface that can absorb can actually right. hang on to it so you want to degrease among other things you want to so you you have to get that oil off you also um there's all sorts of other things that are just sitting in there. The other thing, though, is there's more than likely moisture in there. And oh. a lot of problems is uh, some people will clean the floor. They wait five hours. So let's suppose they did your nuclear option. Now. Right. They take the pressure washer. They they soak it up. Then they they, they they turn a fan on for a few hours. Then they start painting. Well, no, no you're talking days of drying. Yes. You need, yes. you, you know, if you can open it and have some direct sunlight hit it, with those really high power fans or something, but it's got to be literally days of yeah. drying out. So it's a pretty big process. And then the drying process has to be, you know, well, for one thing, you have to use the right paint. You don't just use off the shelf. <laughs> I can, I can picture that Alan. It, it will stay gummy. Even if you just paint the trim on your house, it takes a while for latex paint to cure. People don't think that they're like, well, it dried to the touch and, a couple hours, but no, no, no. It's it's not going to cure for like a month. Well, all right. Now, here's the thing. We keep using two different words yeah, interchangeably that don't mean the same thing. That's true. I know where you're going to go. We're going to go with drying. Right, all right, right. One, paint and concrete don't dry. Mm -mm. They, they do to a certain extent. But the part we're talking about as DIY people, as, you know, contractors, is the curing. Right. The curing is the chemical process taking place in the presence of oxygen that hardens the substance into place. It hardens exactly. You're thinking, yeah. Go ahead. So, amen, so, brother. So, the, so the Preach latex yeah. has to have the ability to harden, to bond, to chemically change right into its final form. Yeah. Of my my best example of that is for anybody that has ever bought a joint compound in the bag. Mm -hmm. There is a rating on that bag. Yeah. It says it's a 60, it's a 40, it's a 20. Right. And heaven help you, there's a five. Yeah. All right. That rating is not how many pounds are in the bag. That is how many minutes you have oh, before yeah. the chemical reaction in this as we like to call it, wall mud, yeah. of is complete. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're 30 feet up on a scaffolding and you've got a water supply and a little bucket with you, that five-minute joint compound will keep your painting job on schedule. Yeah, you need the quickie moved, stuff for that. Yeah. But you ain't going to go take a potty break. No. well, Because it has to cure and dry I, I know what's going on here this guy uh chris he probably swept the floor maybe it looked pretty good he probably even got maybe, the leaf blower maybe got it all yeah, got the, got, leaf got the leaf blower it looked pretty look good. good 
it, it that that oil stain didn't look all that bad. Right. Eh, just, you know, the, it's cover right it up. It's to touch, right? You know, right. And 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 all these little invisible uh, stains that he didn't, you know, these these little pockets of moisture and residue. He didn't, you know. But right. the thing about it is, he used the wrong paint for one thing. There is a there is a correct paint, but I have to admit, Alan, even. The high end paint, you know, we've seen these um, epoxies and we've seen mm. these um, these um, concrete paints. It's still, I'll be honest, it's an uphill battle. The, the these professional companies, there's there's a few of them in town, and th I mean, it is a process. And th this is a durable finish, but you don't, you're not going to get out of this for a couple hundred bucks. You no. you have to do this correctly, you know. No. And and uh, this is a situation where I would say if you're going to make the commitment to do your you know your uh, floor in your in your garage. You really need to do it correctly because it's going to be miserable if you don't. You're going to especially if you paint it a color that shows every little stain and you're and you got the peel. It looks worse to be than just a a raw floor. So well, and the other really problem with right. a quote unquote. Now I'm not going to say surfaced, not an epoxy surface. I'm not mm. talking about that. Yeah, a painted surface is unequivocally going to wear out. It had it, yeah. The End car of story. is gonna win. End of story. Right. Uh where you walk the most, how you walk and put pressure and grind down is going to separate any paint eventually from the concrete. Right. So he, that is a losing fight. Paint right. on concrete, especially on the ground, is a losing fight. Yeah, you're driving. I mean, there's just a lot of wear and tear. And and you talk about a place that holds moisture. It's a horizontal surface. Yep. It's ground level. It's, you well, know. it's stuck in the dirt. You pull it in the garage the with a wet car. Right. You're dripping. I mean, so just don't, don't just jump into this willy-nilly. I would say of all the regrets you're going to make, a, a painted concrete floor in your garage is probably the number one. So... I don't know. Uh, Chris, I'm well. sorry. We feel your pain, but, you know. Uh. <laughs> there are a number of companies out there that do a very good job of applying an epoxy resin right. to the floor. Yeah. And that stuff is designed for mechanic shops. It's rated for at least 20 years. It's got that little gripping texture, too, so you don't get – because that's the other thing. If you paint it, it's going to be slippery. So you want that? You oh, want the I correct can tell you from personal experience. Right. On a foggy day, mm -hmm. painted concrete is not your friend. No, it's like walking. You on will ice. bust your behind. Sure, you know, especially if uh, you know, if 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 you're a guy going to work, you got dress shoes on, or ladies oh. in their you know dress shoes. That's to, it's it's dangerous. Yeah, so yeah, get the textured finish, and you know. All right. Well, I think we've done our job on that, Alan. We did our PSA. We ridiculed Chris. We, yeah, uh, well, we, know, we, we warned people. He had a great idea. I admire the ingenuity to it. Just the wrong products. Yeah. And and, and, and while we're at it, don't ever paint uh, an aluminum roof either with the, you know. Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Metal roof is just about the same issues that, yeah, you know, yeah. concrete. Well, floor. you know, you can't use that pressure washer to get that paint up off of that concrete. Yeah, okay, yes. I'll give you that. It will blast it off. Okay, <laughs> so we can agree on, on that one. So, all right. Yeah, we finally found a use for the pressure washer, but you are going to yeah. have to protect your walls. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, we, we hope we save somebody a, a future disaster. Yeah, a, a future, some future pain. Okay. All right, Alan, shift gears. We got to talk about somebody. Now, this is interesting, Alan. Uh, next week at the Italian Festival, we've uh, we've already got one sponsor represented, Cindy Williams with Shelf right. Genie of the Mid-South. We'll have her tent set up. Well, Jay Hill from Big M Roofing, um, it was actually his week to come in this week. He said, well, can I come by uh, the Italian Fest? I guess he, he, he would like to meet listeners and, right. and do the, he's, you know, let's face it, Jay, you're kind of a ham anyway. He's, he, a, <laughs> he's a people person. He's a people guy. He likes, and yeah. he's, I guess he's going to bring a little bit of a uh, big M roofing and remodeling swag. So okay. that's, it's another reason to drop by the uh, cumulus booths and uh, we'll be, we'll be set up 98, nine, the roar. We'll have our nice uh, tent there. We're going to be broadcasting live, but uh, Jay Hill with big M roofing and remodeling is a, you, you know, you can talk to him in person there mm -hmm. and find out what, what, we, what we've been talking about, you know, ever since we met Jay if you've got any roofing issues, uh, that especially if they involve your insurance, com uh, your insurance oh, yeah. claims, because Jay is a former insurance agent. He's uh, he uh, when he got into roofing, though, you know, he's a fully accredited uh, with the better. He's got the five star reviews with the Better Business Bureau. He's a GAF master elite installer. I get the sense. You know what I think it was, Alan? I don't think Jay's the kind of guy that wants to sit behind a desk. 
He oh, likes no, to be out in the no. field, he, and, I, and yeah. I know he likes to work with his you know hands, and he likes to work with tools. That's probably what happened. I'm going to have to ask Jay the next time because I, I don't picture him in a suit sitting behind a desk, you know, for very no, long. No, that's really hard to picture. But I, I'm going to throw in my favorite part yeah. of the whole roofing process Yeah, is probably the part where most people get intimidated. Okay. And is that is talking to the people that don't speak English. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is they speak insurance. Which is and, its own and, language, and honestly. It, yeah. It's like watching, you know, if you've got a couple of computer friends and they get to talking about something computer they, they don't, your eyes they, glaze over they, they, they quit speaking english and, after right. a little while you hear words you recognize but watching jay and his people talk to their people was utterly amazing and mm -hmm. that's why you have a professional on your side yeah absolutely and they you know they they install roofing systems as we say but yeah when you when you're in a situation where your homeowner's insurance may cover the repair or the the replacement that's something you need to know and that's where you want to basically an advocate on your side mm -hmm. regardless though they handle they can handle any roofing issue um and then of course they have these beautiful lifetime transferable warranties with the roofing systems they install yes, they do. but also jay is a bit you know his, his his remodeling work is a lot you know that's something that we need to showcase more because he uh he's He's talking about the way a lot of people are using their homes differently. And it's neat to, uh, you know, take a garage and transform it into yes. a home office for your business because a lot of people work from home. Or maybe your kids are old now and that playroom is sitting empty, so you want to turn it into something else. So mm -hmm. uh, Jay handles it all. They're they're great people over there. They've done uh, Alan's roof, my roof, Brandon Olmstead's roof, and many others that yes. we've referred to them. Yeah, you can get in touch with Jay directly. It's a lot of fun to talk to him. Mm -hmm. You know, just just call him if you're bored. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> he'll entertain you. Call he'll him directly that, yeah. at 901-484-5645 or go to BigMRoofingAndRemodeling.com. All right, Alan, let's uh, shift gears. It's time for the uh, must-have item uh, of the week. And the tell... <laughs> Tell people what I'm holding up, which I've already posted on the uh, on the uh, Facebook page. The amazing, the infamous Exacto knife, spelled uh, capital X dash yep. capital A C T O Exacto, which to me is right out of the 70s. I remember when I had a BMX bike, you yes, know, yes. bicycle, motocross. You had, they, anything with an X, people love to do oh, that. Yeah. But we 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 had um, wow. What an amazing tool, and yeah. please don't give it to anybody under the age of 25. You know what's funny about this, Alan? Okay, an X-Acto <laughs> knife, if you don't know what that is, folks, it looks just like a scalpel from surgery. In yes. fact, I even mentioned, if, it, and if push came to shove, I suppose a doctor could use this to pull a bullet oh, out of your uh, leg oh, or something. E e oh, they're or easily an appendicitis or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, an emergency appendectomy or whatever. Oh. But the, the X-Acto knife is something, yeah, I would say every adult uh tool user or something mm. should have but um it is it's amazing alan because that they let us use these in cub scout oh i remember gosh, specifically yeah. but uh uh i'll get well, to that, that was, in a that minute that was back in the days when the, you know we didn't even have covers on wall sockets no you know. no kids were that was a long to, time ago yeah but but with an exacto knife folks it's it one, one thing that's uh i specifically highlighted was having an extra set of blades because these things wear out fast you definitely yes. need these spare blades and this thing is sharp and it's really easy to cut yourself with it so i want to i want to highlight it because when you cut like for one thing it's a it, it almost looks like a ballpoint pen with right. a jet you know with a very sharp knife uh you know knife edge out of the razor sharp edge coming out of it and um it's good for for example you maybe you need to make a very precise cut maybe you're doing some finishing work and you just need to trim that little edge like i'm picturing yep. a picture frame what if you you you, you know you use some uh wood filler or something to to build it and then you want to shape the little decorative edge well the the exacto knife is great for that but alan and cub scouts they gave us exacto blades for carving out our pinewood derbies and yes. i specifically remember getting a pretty bad cut you know with mm. that because it, it's just i don't know what were we thinking back in the 70s? <laughs> 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 like you said i remember catching snapping turtles in our in a pond near our house. and I mean, I guess it was just more dangerous 
We survived it, but, you know. I uh, envy your dangerous childhood. Yeah, kids today don't really realize they, this. They, they don't realize we really did walk to school in the snow uphill both ways. Yeah, we carried um, X-Acto blades to, oh to carve gosh. out our Pinewood Derby. But, no, this is a great tool. It's very handy, but definitely also, Alan, I've got the nice safety carrying case. Yes. Don't just throw the X-Acto knife in the top shelf of your toolbox because oh. you're going to reach blindly in no, there. No, you're going to rip And you're going to rip your, off. Yeah, yeah. or your, yeah an artery or something. But anyway, the X-Acto knife, our uh, must-have item of the week. This is Tool Talk Radio here on News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Was that the was that toilet always next to the refrigerator? Aha, uh-huh, Nat. You ever try lugging a toilet up a flight of stairs? News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. I mean, we've seen your man cave, Alan. You, oh. you you keep everything close. You know, you don't ever want to have to get up, basically. Well, you know, there. You know, I'm not a big fan of walking. So. Absolutely. <laughs> and welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Especially Radio. Especially Robo Hip. Exactly. <laughs> welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer Carpentry and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gitt, uh, Gilbreth from DarkOakMedia.com, and our buddy Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And uh, we invite you to go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and give us a like and uh, say nice things about us. And also, you know, we forgot to mention, Alan, one nice thing is if you go to Tool Talk, uh, the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page or ToolTalkRadio.com, mm-hmm. you can check out all of our past shows. Some people might, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that some people still don't realize the the, the, digi- the digital world that we're in in terms of, hey, if it's out there, it's going to be saved in podcast form. You can listen it to is. any of our episodes. you know uh, That's right, Joe. You can take us with you. You can yeah. pop over to uh, uh, Spotify.com or any of the other podcast platforms, and we're even over on YouTube. Yeah, and check it out. And to subscribe, if you subscribe, you get a little mm-hmm. notification when it comes right. up. If you give us give a five-star like. review, yeah. that's, what, that's what makes – makes it interesting because the more the algorithms recognize you those those uh, horrible algorithms that are <laughs> dictating you know what we see on so the internet and everything lives. but but let's face it for you and i we kind of need those things yep, um, that's how listeners in new zealand or whatever will find out about the Absolutely. show you know so but do that and you can listen to any of any of our past shows and especially you know if you call or text with something interesting hey it's saved for the ages you can you can send that to your friends so it's a it's a cool thing to do and we appreciate it and we like to we like to hear from you so well alan um this is uh this is something i've wanted to get to for like the last month and then we just keep getting busy and new things happen and i'm gonna okay. bring up uh i'm gonna bring up a term that you love to use mm. legacy thinking ah i don't know if it's legacy thinking or or complacency or whatever but basically this is uh this is my um soapbox moment and it's uh basically stop living with things that can easily be changed Especially in your home. Mm. Isn't it kind of ironic that you've been delaying getting to this segment? Hey, the, very good, Max. <laughs> Max always looks at the deeper layers. That's good. I, You're I've very been listen- right. I've you, been call listen- me, you call me friend on the air, but how, why do you call me a friend when I openly lampoon you? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Keep, I've been listening things- to the shark music back here yeah. for the last five minutes. This has been waiting <laughs> on you to step to that plate. Well, Alan, here's what, here's what triggered this idea. Because, uh, okay, we know, the, we know legacy thinking. It's basically, mm. well... Our business has always done this, so we're right. going to continue to do our, our business did this before the internet was invented. Right. So we're going to still do that. Well, that's obsolete. We Our house has always done this. We've always laid out our living room this way. Mm-hmm. We've always used the bathroom it's this way. It's always been a living room. It's always been Ooh. a living room. Well, legacy thinking keeps you from doing new things. And sometimes there may be things that are very easy to change that are they're hugely life-changing. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, this, is, this has nothing to do with the home. But I'll just, I'm guilty of this myself, Alan. I've been using reading glasses for about the last, I don't know, eight or ten years. Right. I can see I can see fine. I can drive. I can do all my other stuff. But when it comes to really close work, like either the computer or reading, I started right. needing reading glasses. Okay. Well, I never got a prescription. I just basically whatever, you know. And then uh, the, the long and short of it is about three months ago, I got myself a pair of actual glasses. Right. And I'm like. My gosh, the world looks different because I not only needed reading glasses, I needed other glass, and it was amazing how crystal clear the world can be. And what a what a improvement in my life! It cost me a couple hundred bucks to do it. I'm like, why didn't I do this ten years ago? Right. 
And yep. that is the case all around the house. And I wanted to unpack a few things that maybe um, if you're living with them you, it, and you just decide to take a, a little action, take a trip mm -hmm. to your big box store, spend a weekend doing something. I'm going to start with this, Alan. The sh we, we just recently got a new shower head. We have two showers. We have the upstairs okay. and downstairs. The upstairs bathroom is, okay, I remodeled the downstairs one. The upstairs mm -hmm. one has been, I would say, updated. But we still have that old tile from the 50s. Right. But it's clean, and I've replaced the sink and everything. But that's sort of our, uh, that's not our better bathroom. That's your retro bathroom. However, it's got this old shower head that the previous homeowner left. And that thing, it's not <laughs> beautiful, but, man, the water pressure that comes out of that is great. I love that okay. shower head. The downstairs one is very decorative, but the pressure was terrible. Right. You're sitting there trying to rinse off. And I don't have hair, but my wife would tell me <laughs> it takes forever to rinse the shampoo and the conditioner. Right. We got a new shower head. That okay. Is, you talk about, I mean, you can move it. It's got adjustable pressure. It's probably $100 to replace. And, and honestly, anybody, most people can replace a shower head. And that was just one thing. There's things all around our home that why, you know, I'm like, why are we living with this? Uh, well, my favorite one is loose handles. Okay. You, you're you really big into the loose hardware. I, I yeah. am so, t oh my gosh. I did two, two of my pet peeves as I visit with family and friends and that kind of stuff. Loose handles, dull knives. Okay. You know, here um, we go. Max, we, we got our kitchen reference. I uh, you it. made the first kitchen reference. I, I, I took all Food the reference. show to get there. Okay. Of... All right, but I'm not going to just pick on just like your kitchen knives okay? because there's other knives around the house of loose handles. Number one gripe of every family dynamic in the world. Yeah. All right. It is honestly a matter of seconds to take a screwdriver, stick it behind it and tighten that thing down. Especially like just a... Do it. A exterior door. Like, it, you know, you it's because they all come loose. Most doors, especially exactly. one you use several times a day, is gonna come loose. And Sooner you're right. Later. And it's and it wears it out too if it's flopping around and it's exactly hurting your security, it's letting drafts in. Right. Yeah. That one's good because that's free. That's a free That is that is just ongoing house maintenance. How about this one, Alan? Now this isn't an applicable this time of year, however. We, we're guilty of this. I hate to admit this, but mm. I am guilty of this. Cleaning and I, I would say, okay, cleaning and getting your fireplace functional. Right. Because if it's dirty, it's going to smoke it up. Like there's a lot of people probably, you know, in my uh, my house was built in the 50s. And uh, so it's a different, it's different than somebody that built a house with like a, you know, a gas fireplace or something. Mm -hmm. We rarely use it because it's just so much, it, it's, it smokes. It's effort. I haven't got around to cleaning the fireplace, and I'm like, that is a feature. It's in the, it's in, it looks nice. It's in the middle of the living room. It'll be great on a cold winter day, but uh, right. that's one I, I'm going to do this winter. We are going to get our fireplace updated, but it's not just the cleaning, right? It's just a, the correct ventilation, getting the flu Why? Yeah, working. There, but, there's a little bit to it, but once you've got it dialed in, right. eh, you're fabulous. It's, and, it's great. And um, it's less than, I would say that's a, something, you know, a few hundred bucks will probably get you get you rolling. So right. if you have a fireplace you're not using, that's one I would say really, is a huge now lifestyle is the time. improvement. You know, now really, honestly, now is the time to worry about making sure it's capped mm -hmm. and making sure it's clean. And that way, when the fall comes around, eh, you're a genius. It was already ready to go. Here's another one, out. Sorry, but I, I did prepare this I was statement. Like, You've so. got a list, man. I'm, I'm just going to let you roll. How about those windows that are painted shut? The ones oh. that are painted shut... And literally, this is this is free. You t it takes a little work. You get a scraper. It may take uh, going from the inside and yep. the outside, but it's just a little, a little careful work. And man, you get three or four windows that you can suddenly now open. And we're back <laughs> to our lovely topic of airflow. Right. Yes. Yeah, free. Free. Especially maybe you live in a place where you get a decent breeze. Yes. Because it's funny around town. There's different parts of town where I work, Alan, and some like there's places out in Collierville. It gets pretty pretty windy in some of these yes. wide open spaces over there then there's places that aren't so windy but uh it doesn't matter you need fresh air yes you do uh the other thing is uh the screens oh yeah fix your screen <laughs> you don't want bugs exactly and that's an easy if you're fix. gonna if yeah. you're gonna be working on the windows let's take a look at the screens and here's where we're gonna throw this in 
take little bitty bites. Mm-hmm. Don't don't do the weekend warrior list of a hundred items I'm going to get done today. Yeah, yeah, not going to get them done. You're going to look at the list. You're going to get overwhelmed, and you're going to go, and then you'll find some reason not to do them. One little bite a day. So if it's unstick the window day, let's go unstick the window. Right. Next week, hey, let's go get a screen for it. Uh, the week after that, maybe it's a kitchen knob day. Let's go through kitchen knobs. But you know what? These are 10, 15-minute life hacks. Oh, yeah. That get rid of excuses to do other better things. Yeah. Um, that threshold that rattles every time you step over it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get that put back down a little bit. Might take a little bit of construction adhesive. It might just need a nail. We had a I'm very t- simple thing. Funny, Alan, you, 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 your psychic abilities kicked in again. We had a, a it, it, when I remodeled, I talked about the downstairs bathroom. Mm-hmm. I remodeled the bathroom, put in a new tile floor, put in new sink, you know, gutted everything. It looks great. However, there was a little threshold there between the tile and the hardwood floor. It fit into place, but I never really got around to gluing it down. Uh huh. Five, no, I want to say seven or eight years later, my wife's like, are you ever going to glue that thing down? And I'm like, I did it. It took literally four minutes to do it. Right. And it changed the whole, like, no longer are we kicking that thing across the floor or stubbing our toe. And I'm like, why didn't I do that five years ago? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, but it's those kind of things. It's very easy to live with that stuff. And, and there's you no know? real reason to of, again, we're, we're looking at small bites, big bang. Sure. Little bitty stuff that you just, well, you know. Why didn't I, boom. Now, this is where I'm also going to throw in, Get make sure you got the proper tool for the proper job. Well, yeah, of course. Um, if you haven't edged your sidewalk in forever, you know what? Go get a little roundup and spray the stuff that you're going to cut off anyway. Yeah, And yeah. let it die. And that way, next weekend, when you come along and you're going to get all big and bad with the, with the edger or the weed eater, mm-hmm. all right, you already prepped it. Yeah. It's ready to go. Yeah. Of I was I was trying to think of like some of the just favorite things. And one of them is stop holding down the toilet handle. Stop jiggling <laughs> the toilet handle. Oh yeah. Toilet toilet the toilet guts basically to rebuild the, the inside of a toilet is Literally twenty bucks or something. I mean, you can at the most if the handle's loose or it it, it might even just dev- involve tightening the, handle the little handle. The handle just needs to have the internal fitting tightened, or the chain is in the wrong link. Like there's a yes. chain inside your toilet, yes. folks, that get, it attaches to the flapper. They and might you have, have put too it in much chain hanging much out chain. there, so it's not pulling the flapper crop properly. Toilets are notorious for that. Like and, it's like it's, it, it, you always go to that house and it's like okay, you either got to hold the handle or. If it keeps running, come get me because there's Jiggle a little the adjustment. Handle. There's a or I have like and at my house and everything. I there's like I'm a upstairs and baths, a downstairs bathroom. I'm a there's the thing like where the restroom thing like the toilet like the water just continues to flow. And there's a method that I've come up with. It's like the downstairs, the downstairs toilet. You have to push, the, hold the knob down <laughs> for the downstairs one. The upstairs one, you have to pull the knob up. Right. So I mean. Yeah. Upstairs, downstairs. I love it. Hey, that's good, Max. You got to, but, but it's true. There's just these things that, you know what I think it is though? It's not just legacy thinking in our, uh, in the way we just sort of live with things. It's got, I think it's legacy thinking in our time. It's like, okay, I get home at five 30. I do this, this, and this. I eat dinner at this hour. I do this mm-hmm. on Saturdays. I do this. Well, throw some time in there for these random repairs. Like say, right. okay, well, you know what? On Friday night or on whenever I'm going to spend an hour, I'm just going to fix these stupid little things that are, you know. Right. And But I'm going to throw in once again, pick one. Well, well it's a chain reaction now because you pick I, I, one I, I, and then you're well, like, oh, right, well, now this I, other. The chain and reaction wise, wise is what tune we in on want. that quick, Alan. They, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But the chain reaction is what we want. Right. Because you got one success under your belt. Yep. Well, you know, that only took three minutes. Sure. I've already got the tools out. Why don't I? And then you take the next bite. Yeah. And then you take the next bite. But the thing is, you didn't walk up to the buffet of things that need to be done and overwhelm yourself. I think that's a good point, Alan, because it gets daunting when you're looking around your house and it's like, and, and mine's a perfect example. Like I said, my house is 70 years old. Yeah. 
I gotta fix this. I got the I got I got a I got a a list of like you know fifty little things that really need to be done, and as a, as a result, your tendency might be to oh, I'll get to it at some point. Well, like you said, you start knocking these things off, and suddenly your list goes down to twenty things right. or whatever, and your lifestyle improves. A, a big one for me, Alan. I wanted to throw this in. Uh, I don't want to run out of time before we get to this lighting. Man, you get a if you get a mm. new light fixture, which is typically not very expensive. I mean, it and it's mostly something the average, the average you know do it yourself or can can do it if you're mm -hmm. careful with the electricity. That makes a huge difference, even if it's just buying a new lamp or something. But you change the lighting configuration in your house bulbs. makes a huge deal. Yeah, changing oh, yeah, the just bulbs, changing out the bulbs. Yeah. But now you're going to tie back to our earlier conversations where I'm going to bring back up the science of storage, and go. Uh, tired of all the junk in the bottom of the closet? Sure. Purchase the appropriate things to put it in and label it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another trick I have learned of if you're if you're iffy on something, put a date on it. Yeah. And the next time you come across this item, if you haven't touched it, thought about it, or been interested in whatever's in this box in let's say six months, hmm. it's probably time to let it go. Interesting. See, six months, I would have said like, you know, five years or something, but yeah. Six yeah. months to a year. Yeah. You know, well, it depends. If it's seasonal, it's a year. Okay. Because you're not going to play with the Christmas stuff until Christmas. Yeah. But everybody has got stuff in their house in the bottom of a closet somewhere that has been sitting there to the point you don't remember it's there. Right. Well, folks, if you've got anything, I think this is a good, I think we're going to circle back on this discussion at some point, Alan, because, but yeah, basically stop living with things that could easily be changed. And it's amazing what a big difference it makes in your life. Like, in fact, we were talking about lighting. You put a, a couple of outside lights in your house. You, you feel so oh. much more secure. Put a light in your backyard. Yep. Just to keep it, you know, that little bit of extra security and, and all that lighting's a big deal. But uh, if you've got things that you, that, that, have made a big difference in your life or maybe that you think would uh, be well, we, important. We get need in, some ideas. Get in touch yeah. with us. You can you can call or text us any day of the week at, 90, at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline, 901-683-0989, or go to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. You can send us messages that way. You can also send video, which is cool. Mm -hmm. so, Indeed. Um, Alan, uh, speaking of video, I bet you've dealt with video this week with uh, darkoakmedia.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have. All right, as, talk to me. As a matter of fact, this week's big hit is Scott J. Carroll with Star Trek Day. Is this turning into the Scott J. Carroll Network? I mean, uh, he seems he, like he's kind of all over the... He's know. pretty active, but there are two or three other shows that are just about to kick back off. So okay. um, another big hit has been, well, us, Geek Tank Radio, and The Food Dude. Oh yeah, so the food we, dude segments are getting pretty uh, a lot of a lot of traction out there. A lot there. of traction. Uh, well, when we you have, bring people in and feed, you know, when you well, feed people every week, you know, you know, it, it is food bribery. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, like that, but uh, you know, our buddy Steve Mulroy uh, sponsors Star Trek Day every year here in Shelby County. Oh, you got uh, video from that. We yeah. yes, sir. We were at Star Trek Day, and if you want a master class on early television and screenwriting, David Jared gives us just an amazing performance. I would have to say that was one of the best. Uh, no, that was the best Star Trek day we've had so far in terms of content, the way it flowed, the vibe, how many people showed up. Yep. The, it was it was great. It's it's going to evolve into a, a, a Star Trek convention. It I'm is. Convinced, so. And you got that all captured on video. If you want to know what we're talking about. Just all they got to do is pop over to uh, darkoakmedia.com or they can go to YouTube and look up Star Trek Day. And uh, Scott J. Carroll was the uh, director on that. Yeah. And he's just a good dude anyway. He's if fun. you see, if, you, if you're, okay, for example, if you're at the Italian Fest or if you're at Anime mm -hmm. Blues Con, we're going to be at those events. You're probably going to see a guy with glasses, probably a flannel shirt. He's yep. a big flannel shirt guy. He's a guy. flannel guy. Uh, floating around with one of those uh, GoPro cameras and with those other in a microphone, and if he wants to talk to you, go ahead. He'll you'll wind up on. You too could wind up on international Roku television. Yeah. So and he he's he's a nice guy. He won't embarrass. He's not a gotcha no, journalist no, guy. He just likes to talk to people. So. He, yeah. He's just he's just uh, as we like to say, he's just a regular guy. So so look for that. Uh, uh, so darkoakmedia.com. Mm hmm. Um, and uh, as long as we're uh, talking about uh, the work that we do outside of uh, Tool Talk Radio, Alan, I'm going to remind people here in the Mid-South, if you need a uh, 
I guess that's true. I, sh I never make that disclaimer. If you live in South Carolina, I don't call me. I mean, I don't. I don't think well, I can help. you. I'm not driving out there to build somebody a deck unless but. they pay for your ticket. Well, that's true. I was I mean, going, dude. I got news for you. I'm 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 waiting on somebody to call me and say they need a, a deck in New Zealand. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, well, it, I don't think you'll turn me down. All right, I won't put limits on it. If you need a deck <laughs> or a patio cover or a screened-in porch or just an interesting outdoor project made out of wood for your home, I've been doing carpentry for since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I you know, and that's that's my game. You know, uh, wood is my game, Alan. And that's uh, the gig. Uh, so if you uh, if you have any of those needs, uh, get in touch with me and call me directly at 901-921-7105 or go to my website, thorshomes.com. And um, uh, I don't even know if this is worth mentioning, but I'm going to just say this. Alan, I've been very good about not mentioning the Cubs. Uh, right. I, I barely, now. well, but this is, this is interesting. <laughs> they have a player named Frank Schwindel, right? He's just, right. they call him Frank the Tank, right? Right. Real right. nice guy. He 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 had to take over for Anthony Rizzo, who is like a legendary. That they're gonna there's gonna be a statue of Anthony Rizzo outside of Wrigley Field one day. That's just how okay. legendary he is. So the poor guy had to take over for him, but he's a good guy. He's hitting home runs. Well, here's the thing, Alan. He was in a little bit of a slump, and then he changed. He got a brand new bat, and the bat is called Thor's hammer. What well, do you think of that? And now the guy's hitting home runs all over the place. So I thought that was interesting. So I don't know if Frank the Tank listens to the show or whatever. But, but Joe uh, Thorderson would yeah. like to uh, let you know. What Thor's a, what, Hammer. What a, make, what a great name. I make custom go. bats for uh, for Cubs <laughs> players. So Frank uh, Frank the Tank, I feel like we need to talk. So. I'd like you to make bats for rival teams. No, I will never make one for Cardinals or for, you know, especially the Astros. I'm not, well, I'm not standing Yankees. next to him in the park lot today I'll yeah tell you what. no no the cubs are pretty much that that's my game alan you know i'll, mm. I'll, I'll anyway whatever you may die on that hill <laughs> yeah i may die on that hill if uh, there's a hill to die on with the way the cubs are doing but oh but on bump i thought that was very interesting well alan um in, in i guess we're gonna call this uh, i don't know this is basically what did we learn today mm. I, I feel like a conversation i want to have in the future um was you, it started with your storage discussion about basically that industry didn't exist. There were cardboard boxes. Suddenly somebody said, we need to Barrels, store things. bags, and jars. And, and an industry emerged. Well, uh, Alan, how many industries have emerged in home improvement that didn't exist maybe even 50 years ago or 100 years ago? And I feel it behooves us to to unpack that in the near future. So uh, we're, well, we're going to do that. Just so. picture the number of weird jobs yeah. that have been created by all this. Absolutely. So that that's look for that in the future Tool Talk radio discussions. I just want to remind everybody before we get out of here, next week, Alan and I, uh, and our buddy Brandon Olmstead mm -hmm. will be doing Tool Talk Radio and Geek Tank Radio. And I think the other shows, I think Motor Mouse is going to no, get Motor in. Motor Mouse is going to be there. The Food Dude is going to be there. Yeah. We're going to have a great event. Lots of live radio. Cumulus is going to be well represented at the Italian Fest uh, all weekend. It's Thursday through Saturday. So uh, we'll be there June 4th at uh, Park and um, Park and Mendenhall at Marquette Park. And then the week after that, Alan, June 11th, we'll be over at Anime Blues Con at indeed. the Convention Center. So. Well, I'll, uh, another show just flown by. I mean, I don't know mm. where the time goes, but it, it you know, it that's what happens when uh, when you're having fun. Don't look at me that way, man. Are we having fun? Okay. Well, we had a blast. I don't okay. Know about you, but, and yeah. and we also want to remind everybody take take some time. I know you're going to be barbecuing and cooking mm. out and having fun, but take some time to uh, thank a veteran. You know, and, and uh, indeed, happy Memorial Day, everybody. You've been listening to another action-packed episode of Tool Talk Radio. On behalf of my buddy, uh, Brandon, uh, <laughs> Alan Gilbreth, and our buddy Max <laughs> behind the glass, I'm Joe Thorderson. Thanks for listening to Tool Talk Radio, and we'll see you next week.